It's hard to deny that cities like London, New York, Paris, Los Angeles have shaped not only their respective countries, but the world. One of the strongest impacts they have is providing the social and economic environment where some of the most powerful people make their choices and some of the most interesting people produce new things. Why are those cities so important? Why is it such a winner-takes-all game? Greek scholars from all over the ancient world would travel to Alexandria and Egypt. They would not stay in their hometown. What were they seeking? They were seeking the company of other scholars, the social aspect, and the patronage of the Ptolemaic dynasty, the economic aspect. Why did people move to Paris in the 17th, 18th, and 19th century from all over the French countryside as soon as their talent at writing, reading, philosophy, or mathematics became clear? France was a deeply centralized society. You could acquire both economic opportunities in the private sector and in the government space in Paris, but you could also acquire prestige and social approval from other residents of Paris who were eager for novelty. When America sent John Adams to Paris, he made a lackluster impression. But when they said Benjamin Franklin, they loved him. This is a competitive environment. John Adams today would clearly beat most of us in terms of intellectual interestingness, perhaps even charisma. He was a politician after all. But he was boring for Paris. Today, in Silicon Valley, there are many very intelligent engineers that might easily be the very best engineer of their hometown. In, Val in the Valley, they're just another software engineer. This effect produces both intense competition among them, but also means that they can form a mass culture that is shaped around people's preferences and ideas. The culture of actors and writers in Los Angeles is large enough to be a legitimate culture. The writer is not just an outcast. The actor has more than 20 friends. In New York, the writer has more than 20 friends. The financial engineer has more than 20 friends. The social aspect is absolutely vital. It makes it fun to live there. Further, making it fun to live there, fun to talk to people of the same profession, of the same highly specialized form of intellectual labor, means that you have a good network. Network effects, so often discussed today, kick in, benefiting both your career and total productivity. The fact that there exist such large numbers of people trying to be actors would not create such a culture in Los Angeles were it not for the many opportunities to become a successful actor. So there has to be a large economic niche. A city can't be sustained as a Ponzi scheme indefinitely. Sooner or later, people realize the promise of a gold rush was false. They pack up their bags and they leave. If you want to understand what the next global hub will be, figure out where the talented people are having fun and where the economic opportunities for those talented people are plentiful. It's of course nice if the city is well ordered, low on crime, does not suffer too much from poverty, but these are ultimately secondary. Paris, at its peak, was crime-ridden. London, at its peak, was the most unequal city in the world, with beggars dying in the streets while lords attended banquets in halls. Many crippling problems, such as poor infrastructure, high crime rates, or environmental pollution that are often cited as decisive reasons for the decline of cities, or at least for, the, for why cities fail to live up to their potential, are false. As long as the interesting, sexy, highly competent people want to live in a city, unfortunately, it doesn't really matter if the homelessness problem has gotten out of control or if people are stabbed in the streets. It also doesn't matter whether air pollution is too high. The next global hub, the next city of interest, the next attractor and magnet for global talent will have these two features. It will have economic opportunities for people in a particular high talent industry and it is going to have a stimulating, entertaining social environment for them. The social aspect is something that the Chinese government will have to work on. If they can find a way to have Westerners move to Shanghai, Shanghai will eclipse Silicon Valley. My name is Sam Aburia. I'm the founder of Bismarck Analysis. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe.